Hello students, in this video, we'll show the multiplication operation on non-negative Dedekind cuts satisfies the first couple field axioms. So let's recall, previously we've seen that alpha dot beta was defined to be the set of all p and q, such that p is less than or equal to a, b, where a is in alpha, b is in beta, and a and b of course, have to be rational because they're in alpha and beta, but are greater than zero. And this, of course, is in the context that alpha and beta are bigger than the zero cut. Okay? That's our definition. So now I'd like to show that this operation is commutative. So our first claim, so our claim one, so claim one is that alpha dot beta is equal to beta dot alpha. And this is basically tautology because Q is commutative. So let's prove this first claim. It's relatively straightforward. So we'll do one direction. So let's let P be in alpha dot beta. This implies that P is less than or equal to A dot B for A in alpha, B in beta, A and B greater than zero. Now, since Q is commutative, I can switch the roles of A and B here. So this implies this statement over here implies that P is less than or equal to B times A, since Q is commutative, with respect to multiplication. Okay. And this exactly means what? That exactly means that P is in beta dot alpha. So we've shown what inclusion. So this allows us to include the inclusion that alpha dot beta is contained in beta dot alpha, but we can easily see by reversing the, by reversing the chain of this logic that if I start with this condition over here, B times A, I can just flip the B and the A and again conclude that if we're in beta dot alpha, we're also in alpha dot beta. So we also get this, so similarly, beta dot alpha is contained in alpha dot beta, and then we get the fact that we are commutative. So the real multiplication of real numbers is a commutative operation. We're gonna do the second claim, so claim two is associativity. Claim two is that alpha dot beta dot gamma is the same as alpha dot beta dot gamma. And so again, we'll do one of the inclusions, the other inclusion will be the exact same, so the proof of this claim goes as follows. If we let P be in alpha dot beta dot gamma. What does this imply? This implies that P is less than or equal to A dot something in this set, which of course is of the form B dot C, for some for A in alpha, B in beta, and C in gamma. And they're all not negative, so A, B, and C are greater than zero. And so now I can associate on Q. So multiplication is associative on Q. So I can take this condition over here and say that this condition is exactly equivalent to P being less than or equal to A dot B dot C for the exact same conditions. Again, since Q is associative. So I'm using associativity. So associativity of the times operation on Q. And so this allows me to conclude that alpha dot beta dot gamma is contained in alpha dot beta dot gamma, and the reverse inclusion is exactly the same. If I start over here with this pink representation, I can write the blue immediately so I get the opposite inclusion. So we get both inclusions from this, so I can also conclude that alpha dot beta dot gamma is contained in alpha dot beta dot gamma, and we have associativity of the multiplication operation um, on R. And the final claim we'll do is we'll work with this identity claim, and of course what we'll do for the identity claim is we claim, so claim three is that one star, which is the set of all P and Q, such that P is less than the rational number one, which of course is the multiplicative identity on Q, is the multiplicative identity we already know it's a cut, Let's prove it's a multiplicative identity. So this is in two phases, right? So here's the proof of this, claim three, proof. So let's let 
let's let p be in the set alpha dot one star. And so what does that imply? That implies that p is less than or equal to a times b, where a is in alpha and b is in one star. And so b is in one star means that b is going to be less than one. So that says that p is less than or equal to a times b, and that's strictly less than a because b is strictly less than one. And this says that p is less than a, so p less than a implies that p is in alpha. So we have this inclusion now. This allows me to conclude that alpha dot one star is contained in alpha. Let's do the opposite inclusion. Let's let a be in alpha. And then pick, pick what? Pick a tilde in alpha with a tilde bigger than a. Then that says that a over a tilde is less than one. So a over a tilde is less than one. And so that a over a tilde is going to be in one star. Now, what we can do is we do this. We can write that a is a times a tilde times a over a tilde, because they cancel out. And so the a tilde is in a, and this is in one star. So this is something that's in a alpha times one star. So we have the conclusion that alpha is contained in alpha dot one star, and then we have our opposite inclusion. So we can conclude from this that alpha dot one star is equal to alpha, and that one star is the multiplicative identity on the real numbers with respect to multiplication. Thank you very much.